Okay, let's try this one more time. Peace family, we are back again after having a little bit of technical difficulties. We are back. And uh, we were discussing the topic of education here in Uganda. We left off at me asking you a question about um, the levels of uh, education here in Uganda. So um, I'm not even gonna go, I'm not gonna wait for viewers to come in. We're just gonna go ahead and get started because I uh, already uh, had that delay. So I was asking, uh, can you explain the levels of ed education in Uganda all the way from the lowest up to the highest level? Yes, so it also depends the primary school you go to. Like the ones in Kampala will start with baby class, middle class, top class, and then you go to P1. And then the okay, so what exactly is, is primary school? What, what what level of education is primary school? It's just primary school. It's like when you come to, from kindergarten, you go to primary. So kindergarten. Okay, the reason I'm asking is because we don't class. we don't have primary or secondary. We only have uh, kindergarten, elementary, middle school, and then high school. So for anybody who's watching this, they're not going to know what a primary or secondary is. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so for example, let me start with baby class. If the baby is like three years old, they will start in baby class. Mm -hmm. Four years, go mm -hmm. to middle. And then maybe okay. five years, they'll go to top class. Six years, they'll go to primary one. So primary one or okay. to, or to primary, up to primary seven. In, by primary seven, they'll be like 11 years old, 12 years old. So then they'll have finished primary level. Okay. Then they'll go to secondary school. Secondary right. school, you start when you're about like 13 or 14, depending. Sometimes if the kids have studied really well, they'll start when they are 12 in secondary school. But most of the time it's like 13. Most of the times they'll start like at 13 in secondary. So there is second senior one up to senior four. That's secondary one up to secondary four. By secondary four, you'll be about 15 years old, 16 years old, about that. Okay. So that's called O level. That's called ordinary level. Secondary school is in two parts, ordinary level and advanced level. So in okay. ordinary level, you have very many subjects. Then when you go to advanced level, I believe it's the equivalent of your high school. You only have two years. That's senior five and senior six. So senior five, okay. you're about 17 or 16. Senior six, you're about 18 or 19. And then after okay. senior six, you can go to university. Normally, go to university when you're like 20 years old, sometimes 21 years old when you're going to university. Sometimes 19 years old, depending on how quickly the child studied. But sometimes they could make you repeat a class depending on your academic performance. But that's about it, really. Okay, I understand. All right. So yeah. in O level, can you explain to me in O level, and then we'll get to the, the next level after the final level. What kind of things are you taught in school, if you can remember? So all level has very many subjects. Maybe I start from primary school. Primary okay. school, you only have four subjects. That is math, English, science, and social studies. So for seven years, you only study four subjects in primary school. Then when you go to all level, that is senior one up to senior four, you normally study about 10 subjects. It depends on the school. You could study sometimes 10 or you could study eight. You could study 10 subjects. Sometimes you could study up to 14. So if you're in senior one, you could study up to 14 subjects. When you go to senior two, they give you an option to drop like one or two as a student, like during my time. Then when you go to senior two and three, they could still give you an option to drop like two subjects. So by the time you get to senior four, you have about 10 subjects, yet you could initially have started okay. with about 14 or even 12, right from senior one. So the subjects okay. are basically like uh, physics, you know, mathematics, chemistry, biology, um, geography, history, agriculture, literature in English, um, what else? I've forgotten. Depending on the school, fine arts, woodwork um oh okay yeah that's the range home economics there are, there are a variety of subjects really but some subjects are now uh, are these subjects them. taught across the board in every school in uganda or or is that only in certain schools 
Yes, they are. They are. Meaning that if I leave from the Western region and I move to the Eastern region, are we going to have the same subjects taught in those schools or does it just go down to the individual school itself? They are the same. There are some subjects which okay. are mandatory by the government. They are about six maybe. Mm -hmm. That is math, English, physics, chemistry, biology, and uh, uh, history and geography. Those are mandatory. But when it comes to subjects like agriculture, literature in English, sub-math, computer, um, some of them could vary from school to school, depending even on the availability of the teachers. But there are some which are very mandatory in all schools. And then there are some which the school is okay. going to pick on, depending on, on the availability of the teacher, or depending on how, right. equip, how equipped the school is, yeah, on a number of factors. But if a student changes okay, school from Western Uganda to the North, if they have been in secondary school, no worries. They can still do the same. They can just continue in a different school. It wouldn't be a problem. All right. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe that some subjects should be added or removed from, um, from these schools? Yes. Some of them are so irrelevant. Uh, some subjects really? like are irrelevant. Or some topics are irrelevant. Like which one? Um, I'll give you a simple example. When we are in like senior one, when you're studying about geography, they'll teach you about like traffic in New York City. They'll teach you about the Tennessee Valley huh. Authority. They'll teach you about the Canadian prairies, you know. They'll teach you, like I know so much of this history, like about Europe, we study a lot of European history. Even the geography in Europe, like farming in Switzerland. <laughs> really? There's so much irrelevancy. Like, like the okay. water stuff in the Netherlands, like, we know Netherlands is like the best water engineers mm. in the world <laughs> because they have like this water situation. Now they used to handle it. They'll teach you about China as well. That's an okay. ocean. They'll teach you about Belgium. What? They'll teach you about Switzerland. <laughs> So they don't teach you about geography of Uganda? I'm they sure will. they do. They will still, but I feel some of them are irrelevant. Those are the irrelevant ones. So you ask yourself, okay. I mean, it's difficult for a Ugandan to get a U.S. visa in the first place. So am I learning about traffic in New York City? What's that supposed to help my life? What am I learning about the Tennessee right. Valley Authority? I'm a, I'm a 14-year-old Ugandan girl. What's the Tennessee Valley Authority going to help me? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, it's so irrelevant, you know, like, man, why did I study these right. things? Like, it's, it's just, so yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, this is actually a specific question about one of your subjects. And uh, I wanted to ask about the historical uh, things that you were taught in school. Because uh, you mentioned that you guys taught some history. Are you taught any kind of uh, historical events about Uganda? Or are you taught like other like world history? Yes, yes. So... In history, we do have history and geography. Let us let me just talk about secondary school. So in history, we study a lot. We, talk, we study a lot about African history. We talk about the Bachwezi, the Bantu people, you know, we talk about the ethnic groups, we talk about the wars, we talk about the different kingdoms, all that, we study all that in history. We, talk, we study in imperialism, we study slave trade, we study how the Arabs came to East Africa, we study how the Portuguese, is it called Vasco da Gama, came from maybe Portugal, all the way sail around, you know, across Africa. We study all that in history, you know. We shall study the different kingdoms in Western. Okay, that's when you go to Eleva and you take history, then they'll specifically focus on African history. Personally, in A level, I studied a lot of African history because that was one of my subjects. I specifically studied African history and European history. That's A level. Mm -hmm. But when you're in O level, you okay. study a little bit of everything in history. Yeah. So we do talk, yeah, even geography as well. They'll tell you about like how the Uganda was colonized by British and the different wars that were fought in between, you know, or how the British colonized Kenya, like the Mau Mau rebellion, we studied that. Okay. If, uh, Ethiopia, you know, King Malik, you know. So we study a lot. It's a lot, depending on the level that you're at. So we study all that. Okay. 
Now, um, I wanted but to ask also, did you, did you learn anything about um, pre-colonial history, or is it only like uh, post-colonial history? Repeat the question. I'm asking, did you, did you learn about any kind of uh, history, uh, pre-colonial history in Uganda, or is it all post-colonial history? Any history in what? I was saying, when you guys learned about history, did you guys learn only about colonial history, or did you learn about any history before your people were colonized? Mm, do you mean African history before Africa was colonized? Is that what you're asking? Yes. The voice is lagging behind. Okay, I apologize. Maybe a connection. Um, we might have an issue with our connection. But I was saying um, about yeah, uh, history before uh, the Europeans came here. Do you guys know any of that kind of history before they came here? Like of your ancient kingdoms? You can't get the question. <clears throat> but okay, we may be having a connection error. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me well? I can't hear you. Okay, repeat the question. I couldn't hear you well. Repeat the question. I'm asking about your history before um, Uganda was colonized. Do you guys know anything about history before Uganda was colonized? Is your VPN on? Maybe you first remove it because I can't hear you. No, it's, it's not on. My, my VPN is not on. Wow, network is terrible. Yeah, I do apologize uh, about that. <laughs> Uganda network, terrible. <laughs> yeah, right. I do apologize for that. I'm trying to uh, work around that now. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, work around that now. Can you can you hear me now? Is is that clear now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. This is dragging, you know. Like I can hear you clearly, so it's, it's it's not my connection or mine. I oh, can hear so you very clearly, so it's it's. I think it's your connection. Yes, yes. So we we do we do learn about history. Before Uganda was colonized. We do learn about 20 ethnic groups, how they came to Uganda. We talk about the Bantu people, how they came to Uganda, you know, because most of Uganda, for example, Western Uganda, Central Uganda, and Eastern Uganda, majority of them are Bantu, and they came way before the Europeans were here. We also learn about okay. the history of the Nilotics or these people from North Uganda, like how they came to. They came like from two brothers. I've already forgotten the details of it. Yeah, but two brothers and one formed one tribe, and another one formed the tribe. And those are called um, yes, Nilotics, I believe. Are they Nilotics? I've already forgotten. Yeah. Nilotics uh, from but the north. We talk about the north. do learn that in primary. Oh. Yeah, we do learn that in primary. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so let's let's move right along. I wanted to know about uh you guys like do you guys take any field trips in school? Pardon, do we what? Take uh field trips. Do you guys go on any uh trips like class trips from one location to another? Yes. Okay. Can uh do you talk about any of them that you went yes. on? Did you uh, go into the stuff? Yes, so we do some trips when you're in primary school and secondary school. What I remember personally in primary, we take a trip. So I started in Western Uganda in the Southwest, which is not in the Central. So we take like a geography trip, see River Nile in Jinja, or see Makere University, or even see the Uganda Museum, Kasubi Tombs, 
just like uh, uh, the National Theatre, uh, the Parliament, like important places in Uganda, historical marks, you know, or landmarks in Uganda would take such a trip. And then second school also did like an ethnography trip to Western Uganda. And you can see a Queen Elizabeth, you mean okay. see Mount Rizuri, see the Rift Valley, you know, see the national parks, the animals in the national parks. But now that that was way back when I was in oh, primary great. school, and maybe it's like 15 years ago <laughs> when I was a kid. But these days, depending on the school, kids take trips to Switzerland. If the international schools have school, they take trips to Dubai, you know, they could take trips to anywhere depending on the school. Yeah, so they do take trips, definitely. Okay. And uh, my next question yeah. I wanted to ask you is about um, some of the things that you experienced in school. Like, can you talk about some of the best things that you experienced in, in going to uh, any of these schools? I talk about experience. Your experiences uh, in school. Like, can you talk about any good experience that you had in school, uh, any of your best experiences, good memories, things of that nature? Any subjects that you really liked or preferred or anything of that nature? Just type for me that question in chat. I, I sent it to you on, on uh, chat already. Please check your messages. Um, so I really can't hear you, you know, <laughs> uh, if I see some comments here, uh, yeah, so I'm asked, uh, I asked about, uh, I really can't hear you the, the experience in high school, school, experience in school. My experience in primary school or in school in general? Yes, Europe? yes, yes. Okay. I would say I was a happy child at school, in primary school. I never experienced like any bullying or anything like that, you know. I had my friends always had fun, like to play around as a good student. So I never got caned a lot. And then second school, I really never had any negative experiences in school, actually. Uh, maybe primary school, like one time a teacher picked on me. <laughs> Because my hair was very brown, I just said I have like like symptoms of a kid who has like a malnutrition or something. That's the only thing I can remember. But from that, I pretty much enjoyed school life, you know. Okay. Yeah. But I want my audio is clear for the viewers because personally I can't hear you. Your voice is dragging. One, I don't know if mine is clear for the viewers. Fine. I think it's your connection. My connection is actually pretty good right now. But I'm sending a message now, so you're going to answer this question okay, for me. Okay, so you're asking me a question The question I'm years. asking is about... Yeah, the last question I'm asking about is about children. If you think children or foreigners should have their children, uh, let their children go to school here in Uganda, or should they send their children abroad? Or leave, let their children have their education abroad in Denton, basically. Yes, I think they should because we do have international schools as well here in Uganda. But of course, they are quite expensive compared to what Uganda is, is going to pay, you know, for their kids. So if they can want to have their kids have the kind of education that someone is going to have in the U.S., then we also do have those schools here in Uganda that are into schools that do Cambridge exams or something like that, you know. So, yes, I would definitely okay. recommend for them to, to have their kids in Uganda. And if also want to more education, even some schools like Kampala Parents, Parents is great, but it's not an international school. But if you look at the standards of the school, I think they really they really do well with the kids. The kids speak good English. They are very confident. Yeah, I don't know if okay. I teach them some life lessons. Like when I was in school, we never had those options. But I Kids today do have, um, I'm sure, um, maybe the parents, the parents uh, do, maybe that teachers at school do teach them that. I see you asking me the difference in international schools and local schools, Ifuchan. 
personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take my kids to an international school, but that's just, just me because I feel like <laughs> I'm more traditional and more local, so maybe that's just the reason. I wouldn't take my international school. I, I don't know. It might be us from there. <laughs> Okay. So All right. No, I understand. School, I understand. As long as it's. <laughs> okay, I understand. Yeah. I mean, the difference in international schools is like schools which are international will have a mixture of students. I would say most people who are expatriates in Uganda and who are coming from outside countries. If they may be diplomats or yeah expatriates, then they'll have their kids in international schools. So and like mixed mix kids, black kids, white kids, Asian kids, European kids, oh, like wow. all kinds of kids are there. So most okay. foreigners right. tend to take their kids to international schools. Yeah, but some foreigners also still take their kids to private schools, Uganda, which are still good. Yeah, so okay. as good as the international ones, if not better we're gonna not the parent likes okay and i was asking uh, the the final thoughts of education here in uganda uh do you have any final thoughts on like education my final thoughts on education in uganda is that it should be more practical than theory if you teach kids innovation you know how to think creatively uh, skills that they're going to use in life, you know, just like how to be disciplined, self-disciplined. I feel like there are certain lessons that are very important to life that that kids that would better a generation if they're taught right from when a child is like four years old or five years old. If schools could take care of those needs and insert those skills in kids, we would have like a different thinking generation than what we have today. So I definitely think the education system should be changed. Yeah, okay. it should be changed. It should be adjusted. The irrelevant stuff should just be taken out. I don't see any reason why they should teach kids like some white man came and discovered Lake Victoria or discovered Queen Elizabeth. Like, it's it just take from what we are as a people. And that's those are some of the things I disagree with the education here. So it should be more empowering of us as okay. students and should also be more relevant and more up to life. Teach them at least they're going to benefit them in life, you know? Okay. Yeah. So most of it is um, like Real quick, uh, I just want to say, uh, real quick, I just want to say to everybody in the comments, um, I've been trying to hold off and read the comments so that we don't get sidetracked because I want to go ahead and get all the information out there to you guys. And I want to make sure I hit all the points directly and not, you know, take up too much time in the comment section, basically. But as of right now, now that uh, I've gotten all my questions out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read some of the questions that you guys have in the comment section, and we'll try to uh, answer them. And we see that we have one for Ray. So here's uh, one here for Ray. You can uh, answer this question, please. They're asking perhaps uh, ask Ray about the rules <laughs> as attitudes and uniforms here in school. Okay, this is an interesting one because Ugandan schools are very strict. Personally, I've had short hair like almost my entire life. I've always had almost a bald head. I started to grow hair like maybe one year back. So hair is not a big thing in Ugandan schools. School, most primary schools are not allowed to keep hair. Maybe unless they are modern schools like ones in Kampala, but the ones in the villages, they won't allow you to grow long hair if you're a girl. And then the ones in Kampala are more like, oh, a secondary school, even in my secondary school, allowed us to grow hair. Secondary school is you know, from 11 up to like 14. They never allowed us to grow hair. Sorry, up to like 16. Yet it was a, girl, a, a girl's school, a girl's school, but it still could get hair. And then on uh, in A-level, there was an option to grow hair, but personally, I kept my hair short. That's a little bit about hair. And then the attitude on uniform, uniform is mandatory. You have to wear a uniform, yeah, so. Okay. As someone was saying, uh, <laughs> I uh, think Ray is... I think those comments are saying that Tennessee Harry Authority taught us how to solve problems like deforestation. <laughs> okay. Oh, Tony, your, your comment is so... I don't think it taught us anything. I don't know anything about deforestation in Tennessee Valley Authority. <laughs> 
Thanks, so I appreciate everybody who has uh, sent a donation to my live. Uh, I greatly do appreciate uh, all the super chat donations that you guys have sent. Uh, Tony O'Kell was saying, Ray is correct. Some of the geography was irrelevant. Uh, drawing the maps of New York was basically useless. At least Tennessee Valley Authority taught us how to solve problems like uh, de deforestation. Uh, that's, that's actually pretty interesting. Today. It's a landlocked country, so you guys learn more about the ge geography here of Uganda. You guys were well, basically the experts of it, you know, but that's, that's kind of my own ignorance because even me, I'm not an expert of American geography. I know some things, but not everything. Uh, someone was saying, Mr. Uganda said, uh, the Bachwezi is pre-colonial. Do you know anything about that, the Bachwezi? It's Okay, I'm not sure if you had yes, hit on any points on that. <laughs> okay. Oh, there are people. There are a group of people. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm seeing a few more other comments. Let me uh, get to the ones all at the bottom. I do apologize. Uh, there's a lot of comments in here, so I didn't get to uh, read all of. Them. Uh, Rowlett said, "Ray, if you were to change anything about your education system, what would that be?" I think I've already talked about what I would change. I would involve more life lessons in the Ugandan schools. I would involve lessons in how to think innovatively and creatively. Because if you want to have like change a country or change an economy, you need innovation and you need creativity. I believe that's why China does so well because they're very innovative. They pretty much create everything. So that forms a basis. So I think that should be included in, in the education in Uganda. I would take out all the useless things like New York, Netherlands, Switzerland, whatever. Like, <laughs> like I know a lot of okay. European history. Okay, that was interesting. I enjoyed it, but I would take out most of the relevant stuff. Yeah, and just make kids to love Africa and be all about Africa. Don't tell them that the whites are better. Like, they have to run to China or to Dubai or right. wherever to look for jobs. Right. Like, teach that needs to love their own country and the motherland so i think that's important our education is okay. just colonized still we are the Ugandans didn't curate it so they just took things from the british curriculum and started teaching it to us so it's not our own you know that's a problem with it <laughs> okay uh Benja the one was <laughs> asking uh was asking you you talked about uh teachers trying to date students did you hear that question <laughs> oh my God. Or do you know so, anyone who has a friend? I never experienced that as an individual, but I'm sure I saw scenarios where a male teacher was dating like a female student yeah, in secondary school, but it also depends on how strict the school is. Personally, I went to like very strict Catholic school or a very strict only single school, so... It also depends on how strict the school is as well. Yeah, when it comes to discipline and moral standards of the school. So <laughs> I don't have to say about that, but it actually does happen. Teachers try to date students. Yeah, that's, it happens, especially really? in secondary schools. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. I wanted to talk about uh, physical discipline. Do uh, teachers still physically discipline children when they like uh, misbehave, things like that? You might have mentioned it earlier, but I didn't. I didn't hear it. Hear it. Repeat the question, or just show it on the display. I was asking. Um, I was asking. Uh, no, this is a question for me. It's asking: uh, Do teachers still physically discipline students? Is that still a thing? Like when teacher when students uh, misbehave? You repeat the question. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you because uh, I've wrote some times. Let me go ahead and send it to you. Uh, teachers disciplining students physically. Okay, I just there we go. So I've sent that to you. Go ahead. Now. But um, would you just type it for me in the chat so I answer it? I, I sent it to you. I sent it to you. Oh, teach physically disciplining students. 
Yes, oh my God. <laughs> so Uganda schools, they just cane you. You know, every teacher has like a, a long stick, especially in primary school, uh, even second school as well. I'm sure though, that is high school. I was never caned. Maybe if I was, then it was only once in the two years but I don't remember the incident being caned. But in primary school, it's very, very common. They come, they cane you like every day. Sometimes they tell you to like put your hands like this when you let, and then they cane you on the hands. Those are the most painful cane you'll ever get. I feel like Seriously. sometimes teachers enjoy it because, yeah. <laughs> so they just discipline physically, and sometimes it's too much, like more than necessary. Personally, I would never take my kids to a school where they physically beat them because we'll have trouble. That's a problem if, if you can my child. In me, but I wouldn't want my child to be caned. Yeah, me neither. I'm not. I'm not that. that that to me is uh, child abuse, and uh, we that don't fly in America. We, we we pull up to the school and we find out people yell at our kids, so uh, we don't we don't like that at all. <laughs> I want to know, like, how do how do you guys in the comment section, uh, how do you guys feel about those kind of things? Because uh, I personally wouldn't allow someone else to discipline my child. Even like, um, I remember when I was young, I grew, I was actually born in 1991, so I'm pretty young uh, compared to others. And uh, I remember when I was a child, you know, uh, some people in the neighborhood, I've never got disciplined by my neighbors physically, but I've gotten yelled at or uh, I've gotten like uh, put on like temporary punishments uh, from my neighbors, but I've never been like beat by my neighbors or anything like that. Now, I do remember an incident that I had in school uh, when I was young, where my mom had to come up to the school and talk to the teacher and remind the teacher that I am not that that child of the teacher. You know, I'm, I'm my mama's child, so my teacher doesn't have the right to do certain things or discipline children a certain way. You know, that's what the parents are for. So, uh, uh, you guys, I, I'd love to know how you guys in the comment section feel about that, because I definitely do not agree with that. But there is one last thing I'm going to ask Ray before we go ahead and close this out, and um, then we'll we'll go ahead and finish this live. So I'm going to read a few of these comments. Someone was saying, uh, "Devils 12 African American teachers here in the U.S. Uh, students need to be taught critical thinking skills. Believe no one uh, research and stuff. I uh, teach my students." to uh, question everything. You're saying what, Ray? Sex education. So I see you asking me about sex education, right? Yes. Yes. Do they have uh, sex education mm, in school? Or is that something that you have to talk at home? Is it taught at home or is it taught in schools? <laughs> so from what I remember learning in primary, they would talk to us about abstaining, ABC, abstain, and then B was something, uh, B what? I don't remember, then C was use condoms. So that's ABC, abstain, B are forgotten, C is to use condoms. So we started that about sex education. And then hmm. also, like, just the girls, we used to have, like, a, a female teacher whom we used to refer to as a woman and would have, like, once a week, the teachers, like, put the girls together and talk to them about, like, female hygiene, like, female practices that the women need to do. You talk to us like about you know boyfriends like a little bit you know and then they would check you as well so we started a bit of sex education here in school but more of it is about uh we also talk about puberty actually in science class they teach you about puberty they teach you about the menstruation for the girls you know. Yeah, so they try to educate about sex, but they mainly tell you you can't have a boyfriend when you're in primary school, you can't have a boyfriend when you're in secondary, like that's just weird, it's unheard of, you know, you can't. Teaching you about education, 
the outing sex is for adults. You as a student or a teenager you can't be having sex like that's a no, you know. So yeah, they did educate us about sex and mostly about prevention of HIV, like because you know that really, the rates of HIV in Uganda are very high, so you can't be out there running about with your little boyfriend. <laughs> I have another question for you. It's uh well I was asking uh is the education is sex education effective in Uganda? I'm not sure if you've seen that question I asked for, but is it any is it you know is it effective at all or is it, is it helpful in any way or is it just a waste of time? Do you mean if sex education is taught at home? That's what I'm asking. Like, was it was is taught at home or is it taught in school? Let me check the comments. Let me just check the comments. Uh, I think you're still having issues hearing me. Do you, are you not able to hear me? Are you not able to hear me? I can't get the question really well. Maybe just type it for me. If it's in the comments, let's display it on the screen. I've typed it. I've, I've sent it. I've sent multiple questions. You check them. I've sent them. Try to send them in advance so you can uh, see them. <laughs> but I was asking about uh, is it, uh, sex education taught at home or is it taught in school? And also, uh, my last question I was going to ask was about what happens to a child. Uh, let's say a kid gets pregnant oh, oh. while they're still in school. Um, do they have problems with that? Like, uh, what happens to these kids? Because we have uh, certain things that happen in, in, in the West. Like, if a child is in high school and they end up getting pregnant. There are alternative schools that these kids can go to, or they just wait, have a child, and go back to finish their education. So if sex education is taught at home or at school, at school, yes, it is, just like I've shared with you how we, what we studied up in school. At home, it depends on the parents. Personally, my parents never taught me much about sex education because... You know, African parents. <laughs> African parents really don't. Yeah, some, some things are not normal. Uh, some things they will just keep quiet. My parents, they never taught me much. But a little bit about if a girl gets pregnant in school. Man, if a girl gets pregnant in school, there are many things are likely to happen depending on the parent, you know. So the parents could tell her to go and get married. You know, to the person as soon as impregnated her, or she could, you know, have the baby and then, you know, just drop out of school like that. If the parents are a little bit, you know, not so much into their heads, then they could allow her to get back to school. So it depends on the scenario, you know, it depends on the scenario. Okay. Did you see the last question I sent you? Uh, I'm not sure what just happened. I believe I should, might went off. The last question I was asking about was uh, if a child, a teen, gets uh, pregnant here in school. Um, but she pretty much just answered that question for me. So at this time, I do want to say thank you to everybody who has uh, watched this live. I do appreciate everybody who has chimed in and got into the comment section and um, has given me some um questions to ask and who have also been a part of this live as well and received some information. I hope that I was able to hit a few points for you guys. Uh, I know I wasn't able to cover every little thing. Um, I apologize for all the technical difficulties that I did have and hopefully next time we will be more secure so we won't have these kind of technical difficulties. Um, my next guest, whoever I will have. So uh, like I said, thank you guys for watching this episode. If you are new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe now. Hit the thumbs up button. Uh, you can leave me a comment once I post this uh, live and uh, we just have another discussion. And actually, you can leave me a comment. Let me know uh, on the next slide if I should add another uh, version of this education here in Uganda. And if you have more questions about education in Uganda, so you guys can always leave me um, a comment uh, there. Or you can email me at kingobatunda at gmail.com. Or you can also hit me up on Instagram at, at kingobatunda. And you can uh, just DM me on Instagram. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Everybody else, you have a blessed one for day. Peace.